Okay, let's continue on. Uh, previously, we set up this problem as far as looking at this TS diagram that corresponds to the, the reheat uh, problem. So we've got the TS diagram sketched out, and we want to work out this problem. Uh, it says if we've got a steam power plant operating on ideal reheat, Rankin cycle 4,000 kPa, uh, 500 kPa reheat and condenser at 10 kPa and this problem is a little different because they give the exit conditions of the turbines and not the inlet conditions and then we're supposed to find the, the inlet condition so uh, let's see if we can set a few things up here so P1 is the condenser pressure and it's given And P2 is the boiler pressure, 4,000. Uh, and P3 is the same. I'm going to leave that for now. Uh, but P4 is the extraction pressure or the reheat pressure was 500. And P5 we know is the same. And P6 is the same as P1. Okay, so the other information that was given about the problem is that the quality at the exit of the turbines 90%. So that would be state 4 and state 6. So let's indicate that X4 is 90% and X6 90%. Okay, so again we need to create some names for these. So we should be good to go. This information is all um, given. Uh, we could really put given by all of it, I suppose. But some of it we had to infer from knowledge of the uh, reheat cycle. Okay, so uh, we need to know these uh, enthalpies. Remember that state one, unless we're told different, is going to be a saturated liquid. And to get the properties of the saturated liquid, we can use that special function HL, means enthalpy of the liquid. Uh, and that's uh, at P1. So that's going to be 198 kilojoules per kilogram. Uh, okay, uh, likewise, we can find the entrop entropy. Uh, again, when we saw this. Um, with computer we can do it a little bit differently than when we do it by hand um, so we've got those entropies and enthalpies now we want to use the fact that uh, S2 is equal to S1 and then we want to use that entropy to find the enthalpy too. That's going to be H as a function of the pressure and the entropy for water. So the pressure is the pressure 2 and the entropy is the entropy 2. There we go. So uh, let's see, uh, get the units right on some of this stuff. Okay, so uh, so far so good. We don't know this condition three. So so that's what we need to find. What do I mean we don't know? We know the pressure, but we don't know the temperature. We weren't given the temperature. So so how do we have to proceed? We know it's isentropic between three and four. 
So we can use this process line to work backwards, if you will, from the exit because we know this state four. It was given to be 90% quality. So let's go back over here and deal with state four and find H4 because with the two properties we know now for four are pressure and quality. And the pressure is P4 and the quality is X4. And likewise, what we really need to know is that entropy. So we calculate that entropy exactly the same way. And that gives us the information that we need to know to work backwards to find this inlet condition. What we really want to know for analysis is H3. And we know that S3 is equal to S4. Because it's isentropic. There. So we can find H3 from the uh, pressure and the entropy. The pressure is P3 and the entropy is S3 that we just found. So that gives us the enthalpy uh, if we peek back at the problem statement, they actually asked us to find the temperature 3. Again, if we know two properties about the state, we should be able to find anything we want to know. So we ought to be able to find um, the temperature. How are we going to do that? Temperature as a function of pressure and entropy. How about that? Yeah, we can find uh, the pressure, which is P3 and the entropy which is S3. So based on those two properties um, we can find the temperature 292.2 degrees C. So far so good. We've got to do sort of the same thing uh, with states 6 and 5. We have to go to state 6 first, find it, and then use the isentropic relationship from 5 to 6 to find um, to find state five. So let's start with um, this is actually exactly the same calculation, right? So let's uh, round the big corner here and just uh, change the names to protect the innocent. And now instead of P four, I got P six X six and P six and X6. So that's exactly the same calculation. I want to get the correct comment out here though. Okay, so we've got those looked up. Now we need to go backwards. As I said, we're going to do exactly the same thing here. Except now this says S5 and H5 and T5. And this is not S5, this is S6. Well, we've gotten into trouble. We don't know what those names are. So I can define those names. And uh, yeah, I'm going to copy this comment and modify it. Isentopic process 5 to 6. And then we'll put this stuff down there. Did I get this right? No, see, I've got to change that. If I'm not careful. We've got to put uh, P5 and S5. And likewise, we want to know the temperature at P5 and S5. 
Okay, so I think we've got all the states uh, now. One, two, three, four, five, six. We know everything, so I'm not sure what was required in the problem statement. Let's take a look. It says we're supposed to find the temperature of the inlet of each of the turbines. We did that, and then the cycle thermal efficiency. So the cycle thermal efficiency, we need to know the uh, work output of each turbine stage, and we need to know how much heat is added. Now remember, with reheat, we've got heat added in the boiler 2 to 3, but we've also got heat added in the reheat stage 4 to 5. So we've got two parts to the heat, heat added, and we've also got two parts to uh, the work. So let's see if we can sort that out. Uh, the work from um, 2 to 3 is just equal to H3 minus H2. H2 minus H3 actually. And why are those not defined? I thought we did all that. Let's, let's just throw a big blanket over it and do it all again. There we go. So um, maybe I'm disoriented here. Let's take another look at it. Work from 3 to 4 and work from five to six. Okay, so what I've actually just calculated, it's mislabeled. This is actually the heat transfer from two to three. And the work from three to four is equal to H3 minus H4. And the work from uh, five to six and so and then we need this we need to also know the work from one to two, which is the pump work. And that's equal to H1 uh, minus H2. So work net is the sum of those. I'll just write it out. Work from 1 to 2 plus the work from 3 to 4 plus the work from five to six. And now I have to find the other part of the heat transfer, which I didn't do, and that's Q from uh, four to five. And then QH is equal to Q2 to 3 plus Q4 to 5. And finally, The net the thermal efficiency is just the net work divided by the heat added. So we get 33.46%. And uh, check back with the author's answer. I think he was pretty close 33.5%. Okay, so that's an example of Rankine cycle with reheat and it had a little bit of a twist in that we did not know the inlet conditions to these turbines but rather the exit conditions were specified and we had to uh, use this isentrope to find the inlet state instead of the exit state. Alright, 